Now, in this week's Let's Talk Some Star Wars, I'll be discussing the results of, and your comments from, the poll asking, if it was your call to make, would you change Ray's backstory and or parentage in Episode 9? And wasting no time here, let's get right to the results, where we'll see that 58% of people think she should be linked to a known character, like maybe Kenobi or Palpatine, while 15% think she should be somehow attached to the prophecy of the Chosen One, with another 15% saying she's fine just the way she is, and only 7% thinking she should somehow be made into Luke's daughter. Then, there was a final 6% who had their own ideas for what should be done with her. And what's probably most interesting about these results is that if you'd ask the same question or one like it before The Last Jedi came out, I think Rey being the daughter of Luke would have been the top choice. But now, that ship has pretty much sailed and very few people want to see that happen in any respect. I mean, it could have a lot to do with Rey and Kylo Ren's bond in Episode Eight, which... Yeah, it might make it a bit weird or awkward if she ended up being Luke's daughter now, but unfortunately it wouldn't be the first time something like that happened in Star Wars. Anyway, before I get to the comments, and I'm again going to go with how I've been doing it the last few weeks now, which is primarily reading comments and then just giving some quick responses to some of them, well, I do want to point out that yes, there were many, many people who said something to the effect of, they just don't care anymore, or there's no saving Rey at this point, or something else along those lines. And though it's certainly your prerogative to feel that way, and as you probably know, I'm not the biggest fan of the character of Rey either at this point, well, it really wasn't my intent to put up a poll that led to a Let's Bash Rey video, so I'm going to not focus on those comments quite so much. Instead, I do want to try and focus on ways you all think the character can, perhaps, be made better or more interesting in this last movie of the sequel trilogy. And again, if you don't think that's possible or just don't care anymore, I certainly understand that. But personally, I'd love it if they could somehow save or salvage this trilogy and the character of Rey with Episode 9 for a lot of the unhappy fans right now. Because, as I've said before, I just want to watch and enjoy good Star Wars, and I don't care who makes that happen or how, and if Episode 9 ends up being a great movie, I'll say as much when I eventually review it and talk about it for who knows how long after. And if it's not, well, I guess some will continue to call me a hater, even though all I really try and do here is to be as honest with you all as I can be about how I see Star Wars. Okay, with that little preamble or tangent over, let's get right into it with the top rated comment, which came to us from The Scotsman who said, I would prefer if Episode 9 opens up with Luke waking up on the Falcon and explains a horrible nightmare he had to Han Solo. Luke explains that some weird desert girl teams up with a disloyal stormtrooper to take down a planet-sized Death Star beats up Han's edgy son after he kills him, and how Luke himself does nothing because he's sad. After this explanation, Han tells Luke to never do death sticks again, and they laugh it off. The movie then follows Luke and the gang trying to stop Grand Admiral Thrawn. And, well, thank you, Scotsman, for kicking us off with a little bit of humor. And now let's move on to another comment, and this time from CT99-6612, who said, Anything besides her being linked to The Chosen One, don't retcon six movies and an entire TV show. And, well, if they treaded carefully enough, I don't know that they'd have to retcon anything to make her a part of the prophecy. However, as I've said before, it would have just been easier to make this new trilogy separate from the Skywalker saga and just start over with something new. Next up, a comment from Techno639 who said, The fact that she's a nobody is what makes her so special. It'd be lazy writing if she was just another famous character's daughter or niece. Rey is the first of a new generation of Jedi that the Force is choosing to awaken inside of. Well, this kind of goes with the last comment I just responded to, because if you wanted to make this new trilogy not a part of the Skywalker saga and just something completely new, and you wanted to call the first part of it The Force Awakens because perhaps the Force was going to be awakening inside of people and behaving in a new and different way, well, I don't know that I really have a problem with that. What I do have a problem with is when you call it Episode 7, you have a main character that, at least at face value right now, doesn't really seem to have much to do with the previous six movies that made up the first two trilogies, well, that just doesn't feel consistent. Alright, now on to a comment from True Soul who said, If it were up to me, I wouldn't make Rey so powerful right out of the gate. I feel like she doesn't need to be someone's daughter, just be more organic and relatable. Let her work hard to become a powerful Jedi, like all the Jedi before her. Let her make mistakes and learn from them. Let her get knocked down but get back up then she'll have my vote. And yeah, if Rey gets knocked down in episode 9 and struggles for most of it and saves the day by the skin of her teeth, well, she'll probably get my vote too. 
All right, let's now move on to a comment from Andrew Gardner who said, I would have made her another student at Luke's Academy who also survived Ren's betrayal. For her sake, Luke would wipe her mind and leave her on Jakku. Ergo, her skills would be less learned from nothing and more remembering skills that were thought to be repressed. And yeah, this was a good theory coming out of The Force Awakens, and I really like the idea that maybe Luke trained Rey at some point, that she was a lost student or got kidnapped or who knows what. Because I'm, I'm not a fan of the idea that Luke left her on Jakku of all places in the galaxy in the care of Unkar Plutt too. That just doesn't seem to make sense. Certainly Luke would have found a safer environment for her than that, unless it was some kind of last ditch, I got no other choice resort. And moving on now to a comment from Blake Richardson who said, not everything should be connected, feels way too convenient otherwise. Agreed, I'm not a big fan of plot conveniences and sometimes they can be downright cringeworthy in movies. However, in this case, and let's assume that maybe Rey was Luke's daughter, I wouldn't have a problem with the Force, like through the lightsaber for example, trying to lead her back to her father. Alright, now let's get to a comment from Tim Crowder who said, I know a lot of people don't like Rey, but I still think her character is capable of being super interesting. My personal theory is that Kylo was indeed telling her the truth about her parents. They did abandon her on Jakku. Why? She was showing signs of Force sensitivity, and they didn't want to draw attention to themselves because they were criminals. We know from the Aftermath novels that Palpatine had a presence on Jakku, and we know that he was interested in immortality based on what he told Anakin in Revenge of the Sith. What if he managed to pull a Voldemort and break a piece of his soul away? His soul was left on Jakku where it was forgotten after the Empire was pushed off of Jakku. During one of her scavenging runs, Rey stumbles into the facility and unknowingly absorbs Palpatine's soul. His dark side essence now resides in her body and is, unsuccessfully, trying to influence her thoughts and her subconsciousness. This could explain why she is so immensely powerful and why Kylo slash Snoke are so interested in her. It would also explain why she was so easily tempted to the dark side in The Last Jedi, despite being shown to be such a pure and good character. Of course, this wouldn't please everyone, but it could at least tie a lot of things from the movies and novels together. And I personally wouldn't be opposed to something like this, though I don't know about a soul as much as maybe a dark side force ghost type thing, even though George Lucas has said only lightsiders can become force ghosts. Okay, next up a comment from Zuko who said, Make her the host body for Snoke's force spirit. He has been using her all along to manipulate Kylo, get to Luke, and destroy the Republic. And again, I wouldn't be against something like this. I think some people would really appreciate the fact that she'd been used as a pawn all this time. The biggest problem that I would see is there really hasn't felt like any setup for anything like that, so it would be hard to pull off in the last movie. Then again, she was there when Snoke supposedly died, so... Maybe he latched onto her somehow because he already had access to her mind from linking her with Kylo Ren. Alright, next a comment from Pride and Accomplishment who said, I would love it if she was a descendant of Palpatine. It would be ironic for Sheev to be the one responsible for the downfall of the Republic and the Jedi, but also inadvertently causing the return of their former glory. And yeah, I really like that idea, and it would bring the story full circle and would rhyme, as George Lucas would point out. Okay, let's move on to the next comment, and it comes to us from Palpameme66, and that is a great name if I do say so. Anyway, they said, As long as there is a reason for her unexplained godlike power, it would work for me. Be that a link to a known powerful character, and that she is waiting for them on Jakku, or that she was born of the Force to fulfill the prophecy, but that her parents play a role in her story as they were set up in Episode 7. I'd prefer the former, but as long as Ryan Johnson's mess is actually explained then, I would be happy for the most part. I agree. I think most people just want a better explanation for her than she's a counterbalance to Kylo Ren, and she downloaded all her training from his mind. And next up now, we have a comment from Scyther Girl who said, At this point, I don't need Rey to be related to any known character. That might backfire, I think, if it wasn't done right. Even her parentage or backstory really doesn't mean anything to me either. What I really want is for Rey to fail. I want her to fail hard. I am talking big failure. Then I want her to get up, brush herself off, and show us that she is worthy. In my mind, that is what has been missing with Rey. It's not been her history that I've been wanting, it's her being a real live human being. Well said here, and though I do think her backstory is important for the greater story, who she is now and where she is going should be far more important. And next up now is a comment from my Discord server that comes to us from Tibbs Novastar who said, the new trilogy is the end of the Skywalker slash Chosen One story. 
I believe Rey should tie in more strongly with that theme than how she currently is being portrayed, which is as a no-name Mary Sue with no connection to anything about the Skywalker's slash Chosen One story. I also believe they missed their opportunity and should have used Episode 8 to more deeply flesh out her character. I think it would have been amazing to see her get turned in Episode 8 and redeem herself in 9, because then at least it would make her seem a more human, less Mary Sue character, because she's just as fallible as any other Jedi without training. For a good hero, you need to get them dirty to make them interesting and relatable. And I couldn't agree more here. Rey should have turned to the dark side in Episode 8. She should have taken Kylo Ren's offer, and maybe that wouldn't have made the movie great, but at least we'd be curious about where her character is going next. Alright, next up we have a comment from my friend Reimagining Star Wars, who has his own YouTube channel that he runs with his daughter that you should all go and check out. Anyway, he said, I would have her be the daughter of Han and Leia, ties up conveniences in The Force Awakens, makes Han not have a progressed as a character, explains why Leia is drawn to hug Rey, explains why Kylo knows her, just explains a lot. And yeah, you're right, it would have explained quite a bit, and one of my hopes and dreams for Episode 9 is that somehow they give more meaning to Han's death in The Force Awakens. And next up we have a comment from J. Brian Terry who said, I think Rey is a child of the Force, like Anakin. I think Carrie Russell is going to be her mom, and we will find out she left her on Jakku because having a fatherless child freaked her out. And yeah, that would freak out pretty much anybody except for maybe Shmi Skywalker who seemed to take it pretty well in stride. Anyway, I think there is a strong chance that Curie Russell will end up being the mother of Rey. Now, whether that means she abandoned Rey or had her taken away or whatever it is, who knows. But I do think that is a pretty good possibility. Okay, last up, we have a comment from Ice Silent who said, Ultimately, it is too little too late to salvage her character by arbitrarily dropping a legacy name on her now. How would it change her from being a Mary Sue? At this point, it would only come across as a desperate attempt by Lucasfilm to get disenfranchised fans to accept her. Had they did something to build on it in The Last Jedi, maybe it would have worked. And my response to this comment is going to just lead me right into my closing statement, because yeah, you're right. If they change her origin now, or expand upon it, there's a good chance it'll come off as pandering. And not to mention, there are plenty of people out there who like Rey just as she is, and they're not going to be happy if you change her. In other words, changing her origin could just lead to everyone being unhappy. Now, sure, only 14% of the people who responded to this poll said to leave her as is, but as I usually try and point out in these weekly videos, those who vote in my polls are going to have a tendency to share my beliefs. And since, as I admitted earlier, I'm not a huge fan of Rey, that means a lot of you out there likely aren't huge fans of her either. As for what I personally think they should do with Rey in Episode 9, well at this point I say go the fun route and make her a creation of Palpatine. As I said earlier, it brings the story full circle, as the Sith responsible for the downfall of the Jedi will then also be responsible for their rebirth. Either way, again, I just want a good movie, and I don't care how it happens. Despite what you may think, I want to like Rey, I've always wanted to like Rey. And honestly, I thought she was fantastic in the first half of The Force Awakens. But then she randomly mind-tricked a stormtrooper, and immediately, I wanted to know not only how she was successful at that with apparently no training, but why she knew to try it in the first place when she thought Luke Skywalker and the Jedi were a myth. And so far the only explanation is that she took all of Kylo Ren's training directly from his mind. And I'm sorry, but that's some pretty weak and lazy writing. And I hope one way or another we get some better answers in Episode 9 for Rey. Well, that's all I've got for this time. And now let me take a moment to thank everyone who participated in the poll, either by voting and or leaving a comment and to now invite anyone and everyone to keep talking some Star Wars on my Discord server, which you gain access to by supporting me on Patreon. And no, I don't normally pitch it because I'll happily talk Star Wars with anyone anywhere, but on there it's just easier to have some really good conversations. So if you're interested, $1 a month on Patreon gets you access to my Discord, and a link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Either way though, I look forward to talking more Star Wars with you all one way or another. And until next time, thank you so much for watching.